Hey there, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Great to see you again. Today I'm going to be looking at the Blackmagic A10 Mini and in particular the networking portion of it and how to set that up using the A10 setup software. So stick around, I'll show you how it's done. Now before I get started, just a quick reminder, click on the subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any other videos I make. There's also the like button down there which is just waiting for you to click on it. And if you've got any questions during the video or anything you want to say, just anything at all, hit it in the comments below and I will get back to you on that as well. Also, if there's anyone else you know that might be interested in this, hit the share button. Ah, just hit it anyway, what the hell. Anyway, let's get back into looking at the Blackmagic and the network setup. Now there are two ports on the back of the A10 Mini, here they are here, it's the network port and the USB port. The network port is there so that you can talk to the A10 Mini from any other device on your local network. The USB port is there for two reasons, the first one being the setup and configuration of the A10 when you're first putting it together and if you need to make changes to the configuration and also so that you can stream video out from the A10 Mini to a device that's got something like OBS on it or Wirecast or whatever so that you can stream your video live out to the internet. That's what those two ports are there for. So what I'm going to do now is hook these up and plug them in to my laptop so that we can see how to set up the IP address in particular on the ATM software. So here we are, we'll just plug the network cable into here and of course the USB port into here. And then over on the laptop you can see I've already got the network port plugged in and I'll just plug in the USB port into there as well. Now that those are both plugged in, I can open up the ATEM setup software and I'll show you how to set the IP up. So here's the ATEM setup software. It's got a little little icon here showing you that Ethernet is plugged in and also that USB is plugged in and then it can see the ATEM on both of those. There's also this button here which opens up the preferences and finally this one here that opens up the ATEM control software. I'm going to launch the preferences first of all. Now in here you can see we've got the IP address of the ATEM Mini, the gateway address and the subnet mask. I'm not going to worry about the other stuff down below, I've got other videos that show that and you can see that in the cards thing that I've just put up the top there. Now the default IP address and gateway mask um, are a 192.168.10.x um, subnet range. That's because by default um, Blackmagic are assuming that you're going to want to put this onto an isolated network with other Blackmagic devices. Also so that if you do plug this in, it's not going to conflict with something else on your local network. Now most local networks have an IP range of 192.168.1. something or 192.168.0. something. Very seldom do they use .10 out of the box. They could also be 10.0.0.x um, if that's a, an older device. Those are the three main ones that your local network will have. My one is set up with 192.168.1.x so we'll carry on with that one. Now to find an IP address that I can use that's not going to conflict with something else we need to jump into your network's router um, software. I'm going to show you mine. Yours will be very similar. It, it might look different and have things organized different, but it's going to have the same information in there somewhere. So you might need to do a little bit of exploring, but you'll find it. If you're not sure how to configure your router, go have a look at the little label on the bottom of it. Almost always it's got information in there with a default IP address, um, a username and a password, and your router, your router's software will look very similar to my router's software. There are differences, there are heaps of different people make them, but all of the same stuff is in them. It's just a matter of exploring around a little bit to see where it is. Anyway, let's check mine out. So here's my router software. I'm just going to log into this. There we go. And in mine, I'm going to go to advanced mode because I'm playing around with IP ranges. You might need to do the same. I can go to settings and local area network or LAN. In here you can see it's got the address for your router, your subnet mask, which will almost always be this, and um, the DNS server, which is almost always going to be the router. The next section down here shows me the range of IP addresses that the DHCP server 
on your router will be giving to devices that connect to the router so phones or laptops or tablets or anything like that when it connects it gets given an IP address out of this range by default the range is um, 192.168.1.2 through to .254 basically all the addresses available what I've done here is I've restricted it so it's only giving out addresses from 100 to 254 the reason for that is I want those other addresses to allocate to things that have static IPs like the ATM Mini. So I know that I can give my ATM Mini an address in this range underneath 100. The next thing I'm going to do is open up the terminal application and I can just ping an IP address that I think is clear. In my case I'm going to go ping 192.168.1.90 and I'm just going to see if anything responds on that. And there you go, nothing is responding, so I don't have anything on my network that is using that address at the moment. So I'm just going to go Control c to stop ping from um, running, and I'll close the terminal window, I don't need that anymore. Um, and I can come back now to the ATM setup software, and I know that I can set this to .1.90 and that's an available address. I'm also going to set the gateway to .1.1 instead of .10.1, so that all matches up and it will work on the network. I can save that now. There we go. And that's all done. Now that means that I can open up the ATM software control. Here we go. And that will connect through. Now that's connecting straight away on here because this is also the machine that I've got the USB cable plugged into. So it can actually talk to the ATM Mini using the USB if you're on the local machine. Now if I didn't have that, so I'm just going to pull my USB cable out now. And there it goes, it says no device connected. So what I need to do now is go to the software control connection menu. There we go. And I can put in an IP address. The new version of Software Control will also find an ATM Mini by name if it's on the network, but what I can do here just to be safe is just go 192.168.0.90. There we go. I can put that in and tell it to connect. And there it is. It's connected using the IP address. You can connect to this from any machine on your local network using the IP address and um, do run the ATEM software control. So you could have somebody switching for you. You could have another person monitoring the audio. Um, in here, you could have somebody controlling cameras if you've got the type of cameras that are using this. Um, and of course, um, the people loading up the media things for the switcher to use. So there you go. That's how you set up an IP address on here. Now that default IP address some people are asking is the 192.168.10.254. You're not going to be using the .10 subnet very often on a local network, so change that to the .1 address or whatever it is that your router is using. But the important thing here is to definitely use the router to figure out which range you're using and make sure that you allocate some static IPs on your network. If you don't do that, then the address that you give your ATEM Mini could suddenly be used by something else in the future and those devices on your network won't work properly at all anyway. So that's a nice, short, simple one. I hope that's been useful to you. If it has, click the submit button here and also check out this video and this video because they'll be useful as well. YouTube, YouTube said they would be, so you've got to trust those guys. Eh? Have a good evening and I'll see you in the next one.